Okay, so chances are you've probably heard of one of the biggest names in fast fashion, Shein. They're mainly known for their incredibly cheap clothing that is kind of trendy, but they're also notorious for being very ignorant, wasteful, unethical, and just downright evil at times. You may have seen some influencers doing massive Shein hauls where honestly, they're promoting you to just go out there and spin the coin. However, they fail to mention what comes with these affordable prices. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Bria Jones. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I have a lot of juice about Shein for you, but before we get into it, if you have a quick second, please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're new here. It really helps to support my growth and keep this channel going. And if you're feeling extra generous, go ahead, drop a comment, don't be shy, leave a thumbs up, or just watch as much of this video as you possibly can. Really helps me out and I appreciate it. So back to Shein. So first and foremost, I understand that fast fashion as a whole has a lot of kinks and a lot of issues. However, in this video, spare me giving you the entire lecture on the industry, I'm gonna zone in on Shein because yes, fast fashion is not the best. However, when it comes to Shein up against a lot of these other brands, Shein is light years ahead in terms of how much more worse they are. So to preface this video, another thing I just wanted to mention is this is not an attack on anyone that's ever shopped Shein or does shop Shein. I know there's a lot of factors into deciding where you shop, but today is more of an educational opportunity. So whatever you choose to do by the end of this video is totally up to you. But don't take this personal. This is all information I researched and just facts I'm laying out for you guys so you can understand where your dollar is going. As some of you guys may know, Shein has a problematic record with a lot of things, okay? Their slate is definitely not clean. So let's go back to 2020 with some of their recent issues that had happened. Some of you might be familiar with the Muslim prayer mat situation that happened. So to give you a synopsis of that, on Shein's website, the mat was labeled as a frilled Greek carpet, okay? And it had pictures of the Kaaba on it, and I'm so sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. Let me know how in the comments if that's wrong. But the Kaaba is a building in the center of Mecca, and it's considered one of the most sacred places by Muslims around the world. So obviously you can see how that's incredibly offensive to just slap that on some fabric and call it <laughs> a decorative frilled Greek carpet when that is a prayer mat for a lot of people. So this incident happens, they come out with their apology and I'll read you the statement here. To our community, we made a serious mistake recently by selling prayer mats as decorative rugs on our site. We understand this was a highly offensive oversight and are truly sorry. Since it was brought to our attention, we immediately removed the products from our site and asked our vendor to stop selling to others. We also formed a product review committee with staff from different cultures and religions so a mistake like this doesn't happen again. Sorry, you'll know why I'm laughing in a second. As a global brand, we vow to do much better in educating ourselves on different cultures, religions, and traditions to ensure our diverse community is respected and honored we offer our sincerest apologies to all whom have been hurt and offended and hope we can earn your forgiveness. So yeah, it, it would be one thing if you gave an apology, implemented these things and, and meant it, right? Okay, so why four days later is there another issue with Shein? Don't know if some of you remember this, but literally four days later, a swastika necklace is dropped on their, a, a swastika, guys. <laughs> What in the actual fuck? I'm sorry, a swastika? The necklace is labeled on their website as metal swastika pendant necklace. And, and yes, I do know the argument already that it has another meaning within Buddhism and that is totally fine, I get that. But when there is such a bad history with swastikas for a lot of people, you might wanna consider that not everyone's gonna interpret it in the better way. What do you expect is going to happen? Didn't even give themselves time to recoup, rejuvenate from the first 
problematic thing that they did in that week. And people on Twitter, I mean, everyone's already like, what's she in doing? Because you've already lost the public's trust. So that was strike number two in one week. Okay, she and you're on a roll here. So then another apology is released. Now let's see what this one says. To our dear community, we made a gigantic mistake by selling a product that's hurtful and offensive to many of you. And we're so, so sorry. Here's what happened. We listed a Buddhist swastika necklace for sale. There's simply no excuse for our lack of sensitivity in doing so. The item was removed as soon as we discovered the mistake. Okay, okay, all right. Sounds good, Shein. So in the first apology, you know, they put all these things in place, damage control to ensure that this just wasn't gonna happen again. And what happens again? Four days later, it happens again. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna call BS on that one. So moving down the list of problematic things that Shein has done, their history with designers is absolutely unacceptable, okay? They have countless allegations of stealing from small designers who literally have have no budget, quite literally stealing their designs and running with it, making all the profit. And that is just so devastating. There is a girl named Mariama Diallo, and I'm gonna share her story with you guys. She's just one of many examples. I was scared to do a video about this, but I have to speak up. She stole my sincere rear designs to a T. Guys, they didn't even change that one thing. I spent so much working on this print, these designs. Like, look at my designs. Look at the quality. These were all sketch made in LA. I went, ugh. And then look at theirs. It's so cheap, you can see her underwear. They even stole my brand's aesthetic, tried to use a model who looked black. Like, look at this. Mine came out in November. I started designing this in January, guys, of last year. And shop we were what, another huge brand who's known for doing this, stole my designs too. So as you can see, like stealing from a small designer, I, I can't imagine how heartbreaking that would be like from the designer standpoint, because when you don't have a team, when you don't have like a corporation behind you to do any of this stuff, this money comes like straight out of your pocket or you're pulling like so many loans. It's a really difficult process and a timely one at that. So to just see that like snatched up and taken, I cannot imagine how heartbreaking that is. And it's disgusting just to see that Shein gets away with so much when it comes to stealing from people. They've had so many allegations that they now have this designer program called Shein X. It's tough for indie fashion designers to get noticed, so we created the Shein X program to help showcase new talent to millions around the world. Shein X allows designers to do what they do best, create while we handle the manufacturing, marketing, and selling. Plus, they share in the profits and keep ownership of their creations. By bringing together talented creators and Shein's global community, we hope to inspire and support young designers to chase their dreams. And then they have like a designer spotlight on the website where they showcase people that they're currently highlighting. In theory, this sounds really great, but in the long run, like I would love to see what this contract says in terms of like rights and usage. I hope and pray that anyone who might be a designer and thinking that they should submit their designs to Shein, uh, don't. No one is guaranteed to be chosen. And what's basically happening is they're looking at all your submissions and whether or not they choose your submissions, they're still getting a lot of really good ideas that didn't come from them. So they can kind of protect themselves by tweaking some of these ideas and submissions that come in and they don't have to credit thousands of you. However, what the public sees is that, oh, Shein's doing so much good promoting small designers. You're taking a massive risk submitting your ideas and designs to this company that has a track record for ripping off small designers. So protect yourself. <laughs> Another thing that Shein is known for is their major lack of transparency when it comes to what's going on with their production chain. I'm gonna get more into sustainability with Shein, but if you know like the bare minimum about them, they are known to produce a lot of clothing and I'll share exact numbers later in this video, but they produce so much. So people are curious, like, how are you producing this clothing? Like, are you using ethical practices? And people have a right to know, especially as a consumer, 
you want to know that you're not supporting child labor, I would hope. And some companies are a little more transparent about that. And Shein is very, very guarded about it, which just says a lot. So here's the thing. On their social responsibility page of their website, they address the topic of child labor and they say, end quote, we strictly abide by child labor laws in each of the countries that we operate in. Pause. Labor laws are different in every country. So what they're saying is we follow the rules in every country. However, in Bangladesh, a 14 year old child can be working under extreme conditions. So they could technically be abiding by those laws, but depending on where your morality lies, if you don't wanna support child labor, then that could be an issue for you, but they're not disclosing that. They're just saying we follow the rules and that's pretty shitty. Neither we nor any of our partners are allowed to hire underage children. Okay, great. So that's just saying that we follow the rules in each country. So like I said, the rules are different everywhere and that's still a very vague statement. I guess if you want to look at like a half-assed thing that Shein is doing here, one area that they're trying to make efforts in is within animal welfare, which is great, but also could we give the same energy to the humans? Recently on TikTok, they did a, like one of those sponsored hashtags, like the promoted ones that are on the discovery page. And um, it was called Shein Cares. Sheen cares, hashtag Sheen cares. So anyways, it was basically a statement to uh, promote that they're gonna give $300,000 to wildlife, woo! And um, they care for the animals because they don't use leather, exotic animal hair, fur, um, and a lot of other stuff. They do use wool. So I mean, that's great and dandy, but there, there's no statement that I could find that actually speaks to minimizing the suffering of animals and doesn't trace any animal products even to their first stage of production so it's like it sounds cute but it would be great to get more specifics on like okay how are you actually helping and in terms of your production let's see everything you're using okay and also like i feel like if you have to go through these extreme links to show people as a brand that you care instead of just doing like what people want you to do and like release statements on how you're producing your clothing and also make changes like no one's saying to shut the shit down but you need to accommodate to like what is ethical Cool, and they have the money to do it. TikTok was not here for it either. There were some influencers who decided to be a part of this campaign. As an influencer myself, I would have never done this. Never in a million years because I know that my followers would have come for my neck, but also it's just like, duh. So pretty much every influencer that promoted this was getting their edges pulled by the internet and the comments did not disappoint. But you know, rightfully so. If you as an influencer were just like simply not aware that Shein was problematic and that this was gonna really trigger a lot of people, then you probably shouldn't be an influencer because you should look into what you're promoting before you promote it. I've made that mistake in the past, so preaching to the choir, but I learned my lesson. I'm not a noob anymore when it comes to that, but you like, I, I just feel like Shein is a given. It must have been a really good check. So I'm gonna make the assumption that people generally understand the quality of Shein clothing is bottom of the barrel here. I mean, people have reported like their clothes smelling like chemicals and just like weird incidents happening. And it's like, you can't really be mad, I guess, as a consumer because like you didn't pay a lot anyway. So it's not a huge loss, but like, when you think about it from the back end and like the effect all of this wastefulness has as a whole, I feel like that needs to be at the front of your thoughts when purchasing. This is the issue though with Shein is that they understand and like basically make it okay that their clothes are disposable. I mean, you look at all the Shein hauls that are happening. These influencers are buying $500, $1,000, $2,000 worth of clothing and probably never wearing it again. And this is such a trendy thing on YouTube. Seriously, search Shein hauls. You will not 
miss a thing. There's so many people doing this on a regular basis. And if the thing is when influencers are constantly promoting these fast fashion brands, what's happening is like you were subconsciously influencing over consumption because trends are coming and going so quickly now. I just watched a video on like how trends are just so fast now. The overconsumption and just like the move on to the next thing, like this is bad for the environment. It's just influencing so many negative things around it. So some of you may have noticed, maybe not, that I don't share as much fashion content as I used to. And it's not cause like I'm done with fashion or anything. It's just that I'm in this like weird place right now with how I can be a positive influence in the fashion space. Obviously with fast fashion, sustainability is a huge issue, but I just feel like Bria Jones here does not need to contribute to a whole lot of that. Like you're probably not gonna see hauls from me, things like that, unless they're maybe from more ethical brands. The fashion industry and fashion influencers is very saturated. So I don't feel missed and I think that's just fine. But I feel like my influence could be more influential in other places, which is why I've been making these changes, doing more commentary videos and such like that. I don't have all the answers for how to make fashion more sustainable. It's a big problem that's deeply rooted and it's not just like an individual that can fix it, I wish, but until then I've pulled back. I haven't stopped shopping all fast fashion brands because that's not realistic. I'm not saying that you should do the same because that's not realistic. However, I'm saying in terms of my influence, I chose to step back a bit from that sector and I'm just trying to figure out how I can better contribute to that. It's a journey, but I have scaled back a lot. I've switched a lot of brands that I shop with, but I'm not perfect. So anyways, that said, the fashion industry contributes to 10% of the world's waste. Right after like fuel and oil, it's it's way up there. So where Shein comes in to this is, I don't know if, if you're like an avid Shein shopper, you may already know this, but the CMO of Shein, Molly Mayo, I think that's how you say her name, um, in Forbes like last year said in an interview that the company drops 700 to 1,000 new pieces a day, a day. The amount of like waste production and practices to be able to do that is very sus. And that goes back to like, what are you guys doing to be able to produce this fast? How are you taking care of your workers? I have so many questions and everything is so generic with them. It's so vague, it's just, we ensure that our workers are family. Like there's just no way they're doing it ethically. Because their clothes are so cheap, they're using like nylon, polyester. These items do not disintegrate easily, okay? It takes 200 years to decompose polyester. So all of this stuff is just piling up and it's 10% of the world's waste. So quite literally, we are just living on top of trash right now. And that is a scary thought to me. I don't know about you guys, but these are the things that keep me up at night. And that's really sad to me. They're not doing a whole lot to, you know, I don't know how you could be for the animals, but also like be hurting the environment at the same time. Like, make it make sense here, okay? So moving along to customer service, they're pretty known for just not having it together when it comes to customer service and like their shipping process is a toss up as well. People are like, I don't, I've never got my order. Where's that at? Can't reach a human being. Like it's one of those type of situations. This company is producing so many clothing items the hundreds of thousands of consumers, maybe millions, I don't know what that looks like, but they have so many customers and they do not have the capacity to keep up with all of the issues that are happening because they're releasing so many things. It's just, it's a vicious cycle and people are, you know, fed up with that, but they continue to shop because it's like this chain reaction. Everything is so cheap. It's like, oh, it's not a big loss if I don't get it in the mail. <laughs> like, unless you're one of those influencers doing a massive haul, it looks like they will maybe respond to you if you out them on Twitter. But outside of that, there are so many people that are saying, hey, never got my order. It's been months, it's been weeks, whatever the case. Um, but that's just unacceptable customer service in my opinion. And for what it's worth, like, 
if you're gonna get shitty clothes, shitty customer service, and kill the planet at the same time, like, is it worth it? <laughs> is it worth it? I had a lot of my followers, because I asked my followers about how they felt about Shein um, on Instagram. And a lot of you are just, I will say like, if I had to put a number on it, 95% of you are completely already on the anti Shein train. That's great because their issues are so public. You know, I'm glad that consumers can be informed. I'm glad that most of you seem to be informed about it, but also I had a lot of people that are like, I absolutely love Shein and it's affordable. A lot of their clothes fit my body type. And I understand that. I understand that they're really affordable, but you've got to understand at the same time that affordability can come at a cost in some situations. And in this situation, it's important to consider why everything is so cheap and what your contribution might be doing. And here's the reality of the situation, guys. Low income people are not the ones keeping Shein afloat. People who seriously can't afford anything else are not the problem here. It's the people who actually have money who are buying thousands of dollars of clothes from Shein, hundreds of dollars of clothes from Shein. Like those people are more the issue because those people could shop elsewhere, could make more of an investment into their clothing in order to maintain ethical practices and standards. This is not in any way coming for people who seriously just can't afford a whole lot else. Okay, so don't come for me with that. To those of you that do have options, you should consider those other options. I'm not gonna say, don't do this, don't do that. It's a suggestion, but I won't make a suggestion without offering you alternatives. So here's some of my alternatives to shopping Shein, okay? My first one, I'm just gonna get this one out of the way because not everyone's gonna be able to do this one, but hear me out. Number one, pay more for your clothing. Pay a little more. When you're paying for cheap clothes, you're only gonna be able to wear them a couple times. So what's gonna happen? You wear that a couple times and now you're gonna have to buy something else again because now this dress or whatever, it's disintegrated, didn't go through the wash, it's ripped really easily, whatever. Those clothes aren't gonna last you for years. So you're gonna continually be buying cheap clothes as opposed to investing in better quality and companies that actually give a shit about how they make things and their practices. Yes, it might be a little more costly, but I can tell you from experience, when I have paid for my like forever 21 jeans, I get a couple wears out of them before they start to look dingy and just not good anymore. Versus if I go and buy like a pair of Levi's, that might be like a hundred bucks, but that shit lasts forever. That's why companies like Levi's have these amazing like vintage lines because they hold up. So you're actually making an investment, but it's gonna last you longer and down the road, it is gonna save you money. So pay a little extra for that stuff. You're worth it and your clothes look better. They last longer, they just hold up more. Another option is to download this app called Good On You. One of my followers suggested it to me and it is such a cool app, you guys. It's really driven on the premise of shopping sustainable, shopping like more eco-friendly. So it literally lists out all these different brands for you to be exposed to and do some research on and like check them out. You can set your price range. So like I've, I literally found on their website like some brands that were sustainable and do sell like $8 shirts but they're not killing the environment at the same time. So it's a total win. So download an app like that and see if you can find some stores that are your vibe. They have so many different options that I really think you'd find something on there. They also have on their website, like reviews for companies and go figure. Shein is like bottom of the barrel on that app when they did a review for them. So if you're ever curious about a place that you shop, you can also just look into like their practices, see what their rating is. And this is all on the Good On You app. Another option that's not quite for everyone, but I really think you should give it a chance is thrifting. You don't even have to like go to a thrift store these days. There's so many different apps you can use to like 
thrift online, like Depop is a really cool one where you can buy directly from the sellers and stuff and get cheaper options like secondhand. I really think thrifting is cool. I just literally like, I wish I had more time to be patient. And also I feel like I don't really know the best spots to do that where I live right now. So it is kind of a journey you have to be willing to invest in time-wise. But I think people who do it and succeed are some of the coolest people to be honest, because your clothes are excited exclusive, you know, you really get to create the exact kind of style you want to have. And it's just really awesome to be able to have something that's so key to who you are. So if you can, like maybe that's something you could just add to your new hobby list, right? I also asked my followers to just give me suggestions on places that were better options to shop instead of Shein, that were affordable, have better practices, and are body inclusive. So what I'll do is I'll just include a list somewhere in this video, pause it, screenshot it, and maybe check out some of those suggestions too. If you have any other suggestions, comment them down below as well, because we could all use just like recommendations on how to shop a little bit better. It's definitely not an easy thing to do to want to like shop more ethical and that's upsetting, but I think we can collectively come together. We're going to figure this out. Even if it takes a minute, we can figure it out. So now that all that is said and done, there's a lot to consider when shopping Shein. But like I said, don't take this video personal. It's simply to create awareness around the brand and their practices. Obviously, you choose what you do with your dollar at the end of the day. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And I'll see you guys next week.